Hey everyone. It's been a while. Hoping everyone has had a very, very nice break, enjoyed themselves, kind of relaxed during this time that we're having with everything going on. I figured today we'd ease into things a little bit and also give you guys a chance to kind of re-look at a lot of the information that we had. So basically we're just going to run through a couple of practice problems that may or may not seem a little familiar. So basically just to start off, uh, we're looking at series. We're looking at very a uh, bunch of different series and what happens with them mainly around geometric though the same thing goes for arithmetic. So the very first problem that we're going to be looking at is almost like a classic uh, textbook case of a geometric series. You've got an end term at the top, you've got a starting point at 1, and then you have a formula which is a fraction 4 over 3 times 3 to the k. And again, all this means is that for whatever term, uh, sigma notation, to remember, is taking the sum. So term 1, whatever that number is, term 1 is just a variable for a number, right? And then you add it to term 2, which is also some kind of number and then this just keeps going all the way until we get to term 7 and whatever number that is. You can have this in a variety of different ways. Uh, the number is found by plugging in whatever term number it is into the formula for k. So in this case term 1 you would just plug in k as 1 do 4 over 3 times 3 to the first power and we could see that this 3 to the first power is just 3 we multiply it by 4 over 3 and we want to change that into a fraction and in doing so we could see that there are these three these two threes would cancel out leaving us with one and we'd end up with just four as our first term and we just keep doing this but this again is our long way of finding the sum of all of these terms instead we turn to our formula which is written as a times one minus r to the n power over 1 minus r. This formula will stand for all geometric series that have a distinct endpoint. Uh, we will be going into infinite series again, but for now, this is just our, there is an end point. There is an end, it's not infinite. So anytime we look at a geometric series, then we want to, first we make sure that it is geometric based on the exponent, seeing that there's an exponent, there's some form of geometric series in there. Uh, but then, we need to figure out what these variables are. So we'll mark out the variables we have. In this case, we are looking for an A, we are looking for an R, we need an N, and just to have it there, we'll set a start value. In this particular question, since the start value is 1 as a kind of classic sigma notation, it is not as important, but it will be, so it's always good to know where you start off. In this case, A. A is our very first term. It's very important that it is the first term you ever get. If you plug in k for 1, or whatever k is, that is your first term. But also, in a particular formula like this, a is just about always going to be above your uh, multiplier. So, I just said a couple of things. Let's go down the list of the easiest things to get first. So, right off the bat, we could see, well, it's written right there. k is 1, n is 7. n is our endpoint, the last term that we're using within our formula. k is our starting point, where we start. 
So we are going to have a variety of terms starting at term one and then ending at term seven. We don't go further, we don't get eight, nine, 10, we don't go below, we don't get zero, negative one, negative two. We are only looking between these uh, term numbers. And to remember, each of these have a distinct number value for them that you calculate through the formula. So all right, if I'm saying that A is term one, then we plug in uh, our first term, in this case our starting value of K, into the formula and we get our term. Well, we did that earlier and that gave us four. This is also, again, uh, from our formula, it is the top portion of the fraction. Just be very mindful that the denominator matches your multiplier. If they don't match, then this, whatever is in the numerator, is not directly your A term, your first term. But now we go on to the multiplier, which is whatever number is being taken to the exponent. So in this case, that is three to the K. So perfect. We now have our four values that we can just plug into our formula. So we just continue from there. We see that we need an A, so we plug in four. We see that there's a constant of one minus an R to the N power. So we take a look for R, we've got that there as three. We put that to the nth power, in this case, seventh power. We end our parentheses with a one minus R, or in this case, one minus three below it. Now, preemptively a little bit, I'm going to be setting off some additional room here. But at this point now, we have a formula that should give us the sum. So these are equal. These are equal values because they should give us the exact same answer if we added through them. There are no more variables, nothing that we're missing, so all we have to go through is simplify. One of the first things we'd want to simplify is this exponent. It is going to be our largest value, so we want to just make sure what we're working with. So we're going to keep the four, we're going to keep the one minus, in this case, three to the seventh is 2,187. And we might as well do this simple subtraction of one minus three right off the bat, which would give us a negative two. Now that we have something without any exponents, just simple numbers, we continue our simplification where we would do one minus 2,187. So we keep the four in place, one minus 2,187 gives us a negative value of one less than this number here. So negative 2,186. This is still being divided by negative two. And since we don't really like fractions, we want to get rid of this fraction as soon as possible. We have two paths. In this case, we could just, since we're dividing by everything, and whenever we do multiplication or division, it doesn't really matter the order as long as uh, we do both. So we could divide 2,186 by negative two, or four by negative two. In this case, I'm seeing the two negatives. I, I'm thinking that I might want to do this first. So we leave the four as is, we multiply, we mul or now mul multiplying by 2180, negative 2186 divided by negative two, where if we have a negative divided by a negative, that leaves us with a positive answer. And then we're just dividing the num this number by two, which would give us 1093 positive. At this point then, we just multiply it by four, and we get a final answer of 4,372. And that is our final answer for this sigma notation. So all we had to do was find our A, R, N, and K term, plug it into our formula here, and then simplify going forwards.
So our previous example, as I mentioned, was very, very textbook. We had the formula laid out perfectly for us where we had the A term within the formula, could find it very easily. We had our formula as written, could find our multiplier very easily. We had an N uh, that was an endpoint and K that started at one. In this case, uh, this tricks it up slightly, but we still do exactly the same thing. Now, we take a look and we want to find the easiest uh, variables we need. We still are going to need A, R, N, and K. K just being a good uh, idea to get into habit of noting what it is. So in this case, K is 1. We could see that plainly written. N is 15. And then we have a formula set as negative 5 to the K power. So right off the bat, we don't have that fraction, we just have a geometric series, and we know that because it is a number to an exponent. So, uh, we could think of it in two ways. As I mentioned just earlier, uh, our A term is just our very first term. So we take a look at K being 1, we plug in for 1 as K, and then all that happens is our very first term term is going to be the equivalent of negative 5 to the first power and that would give us just negative 5 because anything to the fir first exponent is just itself. So that's how we can get A. Uh, alternatively, if you think of it in terms of the formula that we've seen for these geometric series, it's supposed to show up, or uh, by textbook kind of example, it's supposed to show up as our A term over our R term times R to the K. If we want this to appear, well, let's think of it this way. Uh, very obviously, our R term underneath the exponent is negative 5. So if we know that that is negative 5, we plug in for it. So negative 5 here negative 5 here, and then we need some A term, whatever that A term is. Well, look at the original formula. There's nothing in front of the negative 5 except for 1. And the only way you can get 1 with a fraction is if you divide by the same number. So in this case, if we take negative 5 and divide it by negative 5, they cancel out leaving you with just one, giving us this right here, and we could see that A is negative five. Those are two ways in which you could find your given terms. Well, just like before, we found our terms. We now want to just plug in, and so we'll go through with that. So we have our A term, our very first term within the series, negative five. Let me make sure this some room here. We've got negative 5. We are multiplying the, the constant 1 minus our r term, negative 5, and it's taken to the nth power. So, n being your absolute limit, your last term you're working with, how many terms that you're working with. So that is 15 and we divide that by one minus r, which in this case is negative five. Now just before I continue with this, at this point we just want to simplify and get our final answer. Uh, you can very well notice that this is going to end up with a very, very large number as anything to the 15th power, except for maybe one, ends up very, very large because it's uh, by exponential growth, you're multiplying it 15 times. So in this case, I just want to bring up the idea of n. n here is your, the amount of terms you're multiplying. So in this case, because we're kind of working with a bit of a textbook answer, from 1 to 15, you're working with 15 terms. And that's because, well, our first term is t1. So that's one term right there. Our second term is t2. So at this point now, we have two terms. And then we have t3, t4, all the way up to 
t15, and that'd be three, that'd be four total terms, because one, two, three, four, and you just count up all the way to 15. Uh, this idea is important as we get into partial sums, where I, there is an example later where we will be using this. I just want to kind of uh, stress the idea that the reason why we are using 15 here is not only because it's written up top, but the re it, because we start at 1. If we started at 3, this completely goes away and we count it differently. Now we're starting at term 3. So our starting point is different, but right now, how many terms do we have on the board? It's not 3 because this is just our starting number. We only have one box, one term on the board. If we go to the next term, 3 plus 1 is 4, but the number of terms we have on the board is only 2. And so we're going to be looking into that a little bit more in just a bit, but just kind of to bring the idea up as to why we're using 15, why we used 7 in the previous example, because we are, work we are working with 15 terms, 15 numbers that we're adding together. The previous example, we're working with 7 numbers that we're adding together. So tangent a little bit off to the side, we now want to go through the whole process of multiplying through, simplifying as much as possible with the numbers we have. So this very first thing we would want to do is get rid of that exponent. We want just plain numbers, no matter how large they may be. So we leave the negative 5 here, 1 minus, and so uh, negative 5 to the 15th power ends up as a negative 30517578125. As I mentioned, it is a very large number, kind of cut off a little bit, but a good rule of thumb here is that at this point, all we're doing is taking 5 to the 15th power, and that would be the uh, 30517578125. And because we are taking a negative as our input for the exponent, if this is an even number, well, if we had negative 5 to the second power, all that's happening is negative 5 times negative 5, and a negative times a negative gives us a positive. If we do this an odd number of times, say three times, well here, a negative times a negative, well that's a positive, but then we're multiplying by another negative, which would give us a negative. So if the exponent is odd and you have a negative in there, it'll end up negative, otherwise it is positive. Down here, we could do this simple uh, subtraction where if we're subtracting a negative number, it becomes positive, so we do one plus five, which is just 6. Now we've got a very large number, we've got 1 minus that number, and so we want to do the subtraction within the parentheses, so we've got negative 5 still, 1 minus this number when you're subtracting a negative number just like we did, that is actually adding it, so we just add 1 to that number there, so a, almost everything stays the same to, except we have that additional one. Now, I don't know about you, but this is a very large number. I'd rather not multiply it right off the bat because then it'll just be an even larger number. So I'm actually thinking it might be a good idea to divide this by six first just so we have a slightly smaller number at the very least to work with, so we keep the negative five. When we divide this number here by six, we end up with 508626321, where we finally multiply it by negative five, 
leaving us with this negative number here. 2, 5, 4, 3, 1, 3, 1, 5, 1, 0, 5. All from plugging in to the formula and getting our answer. All right, so that last one was quite large. That uh, gigantic number that we end up with uh, is the answer, but why? Why is always a good question. Uh, why is it the answer? Why does it work? Uh, can you trust that that works? Why is it that we're using this? Now, I'm not going to go into the details of how this formula is found. Uh, there are plenty of videos online. It can get a little convoluted uh, and can be confusing if you aren't already confused. Uh, but at the very least, hold true that this formula does work. So we're actually going to use a much, much smaller example here where we have the sigma notation of the formula 2 over 5 times 5 to the k value starting at 1, ending at 4. So in this case, we're only working with four terms, and we want to get the sum of those four terms. So again, we start off, what are our four values? In this case, we'll start off with the ones directly written. Our starting point is 1. How many terms are we using? In this case, we're going up to maximum of 4, and so we're using four terms make sure that kind of shows up better and then we find our starting term now as I mentioned uh, you would just plug in your starting term here k equals 1 and you'd get it but we also have a bit more of our standard view for how the formula is so in this case our starting value should just be 2 feel free to plug in 1 for k just to make sure but as we have the formula set as is, we have our starting point of 2. And then we have r, our multiplier, which is underneath the exponent, which is 5. Similar to the previous question, but not negative. And so we continue from there. A quick note that when working with negative exponents, uh, very likely whatever whether the final exponent is even or odd will determine what your total will be because it just becomes a large fluctuation of well we start off with negative five okay after negative five well you get uh, positive 25 and if you add 25 and negative 5 you get 20 and so it just kind of is a big game of subtracting then adding then subtracting then adding uh, tangent aside again we are working with positives so all the numbers are positive therefore our final answer will be positive now at the very beginning I was mentioning how a is our very first term and so in this case uh, we start off with 2 here as a we plug in 1 minus our r or our multiplying multiplier 5 to the fourth power over 1 minus 5 and this one we should be able to go through very very quickly just because uh, through our simplification we're not working with any extremely large numbers as before so we do 2 times 1 minus 625 over one over one minus five which is just negative four this is in turn equal to two times negative 624 where we take the one minus 625 still over our negative four in this case then 624 uh, divided by four both are negative so we it would be helpful to get rid of those negatives as well as the fraction at the same time. So negative over a negative is a positive and 624 divided by 4 is 156 
we still have that 2 being multiplied to it, and we end up with 312. At the start of this question, I did bring up the whole point of, does this actually work? How do we know that it works? Well, right now, we've got a number. We've got what we're saying, this sigma notation is equal to. All right, so let's actually check if that's true. We did our work. We should believe that it works, but it never hurts to double check. It never hurts to say, why? So in this case, we know that this is just a shorthand of saying, well, we have a bunch of numbers, we have a geometric series, we want to add everything together. So we start at our first term, term 1. If we're starting with our very first k equals 1, we plug in for the term number. We have 2 over 5 times 5 to the first power, and that should equal 2, where we have uh, 2 over 5 times 5. The 5s cancel out, and you, end up, you do end up with 2. We are adding that to our next term, term 2. So we have same formula, except 2 over 5 times 5 squared. 5 squared, in this case, is just 25. So we've got 2 over 5 times 25. We multiply them across. We get 50 over 5, and then we would get 10. So I'm going to move everything down just a little bit, make some room. I can see that this is running out already. Let's see if this works better. 2, 10, we're adding it together. So now we need our third term. Well, we've got the same formula, 2 over 5 times 5 to the third power, which is just 2 over 5 times 125. In this case, if we set this over 1, we could see that these two have a number in common. This cancels out to 1. This is 125 divided by 5, which gives us 25. 2 times 25 is 50. 50 over 1, we have 50 as our answer. And last but not least, 2 to the four, uh, the fourth term, which is 2 over 5 times 5 to the 4th power. In this case, 2 over 5 times Alright, so that last question was quite a bit of a doozy. It was quite large, we ended up with a negative at the very end, and so we want to take a step back. We want to some of you may be asking, well, at so large, how do we know that that's the right answer? How do we know that it actually is correct? Uh, some of you are just saying that uh, that's the answer, it's all set, I don't need to ask questions. So in either case, it is always good to ask questions, making sure that it does work, because when, you do wor when you're working with such large numbers, it can get extra confusing of where all of this comes from. Why is it negative? Why is it that uh, it's not something smaller? Or maybe some of the numbers are a little off. So we want to work with something a little bit smaller so that we could see whether this actually works and actually gauge uh, what happens when we're taking the sigma notation. So in this case, again, we want to start off as per normal. We take our k term of 1, as written just there, n being the number of terms we're using. In this case, since it is almost standard form, 1 to 4, we have 4 of them. We then take a look for our starting term and our multiplier. So our multiplier, we could see that that is just underneath the exponent, 5, and our starting term, well, we could either plug in 1 as our starting value, or 
so we could see that this is more of a standard function for what we're looking for and we have a denominator that is the multiplier so our starting term should be 2. We then just plug into our equation where we have a as 2 1 minus our multiplier to the n power 1 minus 5 at the bottom for the 1 minus r and we simplify. This simplification we should be able to go through rather quickly uh, as we're working with much much smaller uh, numbers. So we keep the 2 where it is, we bring out the exponent 5 to the fourth power which is 625 we put it all over 1 minus 5 and then in this case we continue forward 1 minus 625 which is we have still the 2 we have a negative 624 uh, 1 minus 5 is negative 4 we want to get rid of these negatives just like we did in the first problem so we can divide 624 by 4 and a negative divided by a negative is a positive so this would just leave us with 156 we still have that multiplication of 2 and 2 times 156 is 312 now given this formula which for the most part we're just being told we have to trust now uh, I'm not gonna go into too much detail about what exactly happens uh, that we get this formula I believe some of the other videos I have posted for geometric series do go into that but ultimately it is a set pattern where uh, we're lining up all of our terms we could do a little bit bit of arithmetic to simplify it through as just a standard statement with variables we can easily find so in this case I'm saying that this sigma notation where we are adding four values together is 312 well there is an easy way to tell if this is in fact true if this math actually works and whether our final answer is 312 and that is by just adding it ourselves so let's do exactly that let's make some of our room so what we're saying is we need four terms we're gonna have four terms total we've got one we've got a second we've got three and we have four and again each of these is some number we're gonna find that number in just a moment but if we add all of these together this should equal 312 so let's take a look at our very first term in this case term 1 because we're starting at 1 well let's plug into our formula 2 over 5 times 5 to the first power well in this case 5 to the first power is just 5 2 over 5 is just 2 over 5 and if we continue with this formula 5 and 5 cross out giving us 1 2 times 1 because when you're multiplying fractions you just multiply straight across 2 times 1 is just 2 1 times 1 is just 1 so 2 over 1 is just the equivalent of 2 so we don't need to write that over 1 there alright perfect we put our addition there because we're actually adding our numbers so term 2 alright so now k is equal to 2 here k was equal to 1 let's plug in for k so we have 2 over 5 times 5 to the second power 5 to the second power is 25 we're working with the fractions so we're just gonna set that over 1 now in this case we could see that well 5 and 25 have something common you could take 5 out of them divide them by 5 here this becomes a 1 25 divided by 5 is just 5 multiply across 2 times 5 is 10 1 times 1 is 1 we get 10 perfect that's our second term now here term 3 
k equals 3. We plug in just like we were doing before, 2 over 5 times 5 to the third power. That's 125 over 1, 2 over 5. You, could, you might already be able to see a bit of a pattern where all that we're doing is we're going to cross out the 5 here. We're going to divide this by 5 to give us the previous number we were working with. 2 times 25 is 50. And we move on to the next one. k equals 4. 2 over 5 times 5 to the fourth power. We've got 2 over 5 times 625 over 1. Cancel out 125. 125 times 2, which is 250. And we don't go any further because this is the last term we should be working with. Since it's the last term, we just need to finally add everything up together. So let's do exactly that. So I like to start off with some of the larger numbers first. Our larger number being 250. So if we start off at 250, we can work backwards from there. So 250 times 50 is equal to 300. All right, so then this is done, this is done. 300 plus 10 gives us 310. So this is done, this is done. 310 plus 2 gives us our final answer of 312. This is done, this is done, nothing else to add. We get our final answer of 312, and we could see that it did, in fact, work. But what would you rather do? This right here, where, yeah, we could say that this isn't too much work, but that's because we're only working with four terms. Say we had the 15 terms from the previous problem. Then we wouldn't just be working with four, we'd have 15 of these. We'd be adding 15 numbers together at the end, and we'd still get the same answer. It's just that just plugging it in is much, much easier even if we may work with uh, large numbers immediately rather than work up to them. Let's move on to something a little bit more experimental, uh, let's say. In this case, we've got our sigma notation just as before with, and this is reminiscent of our second question, where we don't have our standard formula, it is just 2 to the k, but we know that's geometric because it is an exponent. So let's start off again where uh, we have started off before. So in this case, we start off with our very first term, uh, our starting point. So in this case, it's not 1, it's actually 7. So we want to make sure to mark down that our starting point is 7. And that's going to become important because the way we get n, before, whenever we started at 1, uh, as I explained a little bit previously, uh, it's understood that you go from your starting point, your starting term, all the way to your final term, uh, whatever it may be, uh, just let's say x, right? To your final term, whatever that is. In this case, we're doing the same thing except we're just not starting at 1. So if we want to go from 7 to 12, well, we have term 7. We then have term 8. We've got 9. We've got 10, 11. And then we've got 12. And so rather than saying n is 12, we count out how many terms we have here. In this case, we have 1. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 terms, and that is what our n is. Uh, you could also think of it as if we start, if we, our very initial k is 7, we've reduced both of these slowly by 1 until it becomes k, then this would become 6. But it's just remember that we're working with how many terms we're looking at. 
In this case, since we're only looking at six things, we're adding together, n is six. Now a, our starting term, we can't necessarily just use uh, the previous seeing if there's the function and using our numerator, because that only works with one. So we have to plug in for our starting term to get a. In this case, plug in seven for k, two to the seventh power, uh, two to the seventh power is 128. That is our very first term. Uh, that's the very first number we have for it. And then r is just our multiplier, which is underneath the exponent. So things are a little bit different here because we're not starting at one. And it's important to note that because when you're given a different set of numbers, you need to know the start and the end point. At this point then, all we have to do again is just plug in. So we have our a, which is 128. 1 minus stays the same. We have our multiplier and we have our exponent of n as the sixth power. We're dividing this by 1 minus 2 and we want to simplify as forward. Uh, the simplification I would hope you guys kind of have the gist of by now as we first work with the exponent. 128 stays the same. 1 minus 64 over 1 minus 2, which is just negative 1. 1 minus 64, here the 128 stays where it is. This becomes negative 63 over negative 1. We could very easily cancel out these negatives by dividing negative 63 by negative 1 to give us 128 times 63, which gives us our final answer of 8064. That is how we work with non uh, one starting sigma notations. Just to remember that k is our very first term number, n is the number of terms we're working with. In this case, it's six. And then a is our very first number. So for term seven, what is that number? And r is our multiplier, we plug in as we have and simplify to get 8064. Last but not least, we want to take a look at infinites. Now, we want to start off exactly as we have. We could see it's a sigma notation, we could see it's a geometric series, let's just start off where we normally would and see how far we can go. Now in this case, our very first starting value is 1. So k is 1, we're going to set down k, n. Now in this case, n is a little weird. There's no number here, so we can't really calculate where it is, so we're just going to set it as infinity, because there's no other way of showing what n could be besides just infinity. a is our very first term, so we plug in for whatever k is to start off with, it's one, so that just leaves us with whatever the multiplier is. And then our multiplier, r, is also just two over five. So now, as we head forward, we just, let's plug it into our formula and see what happens. So by plugging it in, we've got a, that's just two over five. We've got our one minus r, r is 2 over 5 to the infinite power. A little weird, but let's just continue from here. 1 minus our r, which is 2 over 5. In this case, you might already see the issue here. We can't really take an infinite number here. We can't uh, take a number to the infinite power because by technicality, that would kind of just be infinity. So one minus infinity that, you know, there, there are ways of doing some, something like this in higher forms of math, but here we're not going to deal with that. So instead, we actually have a different formula than this one right here. Now this is our general formula for finite sums, finite, being that there is an 
end. So we need a formula for infinite sums, which is very, very similar, but slightly different. In this case, we don't have any additional exponents. We don't have that right there. Uh, there is just one caveat to these. You cannot use a number that is uh, greater than 1 or less than negative 1, uh, including negative 1, I believe. Because all that will happen when you have a whole number uh, or anything that isn't a fraction between negative 1 and 1 is that the answer will just become infinity. Even at 1, if we add up 1 an infinite number of times, that becomes infinity. But with fractions, uh, they don't directly equal to a specific number, but they get so close to a sum for a specific number and do n and never pass it that it, that we count it as being equal to it. Uh, it's the same idea as when we have the half constantly adding an additional half to something. So if we start off with a square, we take a ha half, we add it there, right? We take half of half and we add it to the square. We take half of half of half and we keep adding it and adding it until we're getting so close to the end that it's so minute it almost doesn't matter even though technically there's still always going to be a space missing. So in this case these fractional exponent fractional geometric series have something very very similar to that in common. So based on our formula all we need is our starting term whatever the term that we would start with by plugging into the formula and our multiplier. We plug those in. They happen to be exactly the same. So we have 2 over 5 and we're dividing that by 1 minus our multiplier 2 over 5. Up at the top we're not doing anything to it. It's just there. That's what the a is. But over at the bottom 1 minus a fraction 2 over 5 in this case would give us the missing part of the whole. So in this case 1 minus 2 over 5 gives us 3 over 5. Now at this point we have a statement where we are dividing by a fraction. So always to remember when dividing by a fraction it is the exact same thing as taking the numerator and multiplying by the reciprocal of the denominator. 5 over 3 and so we could we might already be able to see what's happening. We have the cross multiplication here being in common so we could take out 5 from both 1 1 here multiply across 2 times 1 is 2 1 times 3 is 3 and we get our answer as 2 over 3 where we could write it as 2 slash 3 write it as a decimal 0.66 whether we just kind of signify that it continues like this or signify that we have a bar over it, whatever it is that you'd fancy, uh, try and always try and keep it as simple as possible, simplified as possible. So there were our five questions with a variety of different types of ways to work around geometric series and what we do with them. Uh, if you haven't already noticed, these are the exact five questions that were on the quiz from previous. And so I hope that actually looking at these work through it rather than possibly uh, if you just plugged it in on the computer, you actually saw it because formulas can vary greatly based on what somebody put in. You may not notice, but there, may, there are a lot of formulas that are based around k starting at zero, and that changes everything drastically. Uh, we could use the knowledge we have here based on that information though and actually get what we have. Say uh, in the very first example that we had we had our sigma notation n equals uh, 7 
k equals 1 and it was 4 over 3 times 3 to the k. So right here, this is much different than if I were to write down k starting at 0 and going to 7, 4 over 3 times 3 to the k because it adds in an additional number. Here, 1 through 7, so that's one box, that's two boxes, all the way up to a total only of seven terms. There are a total of seven terms that we are working with. Well here, we start at zero, zero still counts. Zero has a box, one has a box, two has a box, all the way up to seven, and that is eight terms. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different terms. So that adds on an additional term that we don't actually want there. Uh, you can maybe then say, well, if we bring this down by one and bring this up to six, well then now we're working with seven terms, just like that. But our starting point is different now. Here we're starting at zero, here we're starting at one. We plug one into our formula, we would end up getting uh, 3 to the 1 power, 4 over 3 times 3 would just give us 4. So our starting term here is equal to 4, but our starting term here, 3 to the 0 power is 1, 4 over 3 times uh, 1 is 4 over 3, and so it can change things drastically. Just keep that in mind as you're looking at things like that. There are ways to interchange them, but for the moment, I especially want you guys to kind of get used to the idea of even just doing this. Plugging in uh, the way this can work, kind of an interchanging, is remembering that A is the very first term. If you remember that, uh, you're trying to find A at 1, then you could plug in A here, even if you had 0 to 6, you're still working with seven terms, it's become seven, etc., etc. There are ways around it, but be very mindful of this smallest change that messes with everything. So I'm hoping you guys follow through with the formulas for this uh, requiz. I know this was probably one of the longer videos, and if you stuck through, excellent, you were able to go through. Uh, if you kind of sped throughout, I would recommend at the very least definitely taking a look at the second problem and definitely taking a look at the uh, last two that we just did because those will be excellent examples working forward. Otherwise, I hope you guys are having a nice day. Welcome to uh, the fourth quarter and I hope you are staying uh, healthy and safe.